Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. I think we're in the right moment to do this because they're, I mean, it's not that, that in the past they were not open, but they are more open now and they are willing to do products that they never did before, you know, even if they have the material, you know, uh, they, because I experienced this with wood stuff. They, they are like, um, I never did this before. I'm used to do chairs or I'm used to do tables, but guess what? I have all the things that I need. And if you walk me through, I can accomplish this, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I think if you're building a private label brand of home decor or things like that and you are able to take the time to work with them you you will have massive su success i mean and I, i'm not saying that the price is going to be the same i never say that the price is going to be the same in, like in china because there's many differences uh in latin america there's group that support um companies little companies or uh, uh, startups and and it's not there's no slavery at at the level that we can see in other countries you know uh, and i also like to take care of of the manufacturers or the or the artesanos right because i mean most of their families they eat from that, you know? And if you are coming to one of our countries and say, oh, but I want to pay $2 for this, you're charging me for it, but I want to pay $2 because I paid $2 in China. You have to realize that you're not in China and you're dealing with someone that will probably can grow with you, but they eat from, from that only product, for example. Right, and they may not be at the point where they can give you super mass manufacturing prices like China can, you know, because a lot of raw materials are in China. So they have to sometimes import those raw materials, but where you can make up the money, here's the thing. So here's the wonderful thing. It, it might sound like, okay, Susanna just said we can't get good prices. And you know, I may as well just stay in China then, okay? So here's where there's some really cool benefits. This is what I'm really excited about sourcing from Latin America for. Not only is there not an ocean between us, you know, if I'm selling in the US, there's no giant ocean that I have to import. So lead times, yeah. importing is actually quite easy. So I have several clients that have moved their manufacturing to Mexico and they used to be in Europe or China and um, what has been really cool about it is they went from having to order, because all of us have to order big quantities in China. We have to order big quantities because that's how we get discounts, right? We order big quantities, we stick it in a container, we put it across the ocean. Our lead times to get those big quantity made, usually 30 to 45 days, depending on what the product is, just to get it produced. And then, the lead time to get it here is 30 days, sometimes longer, right? So now we're looking at, we always need to be looking 90 days ahead to stay ahead of our manufacturing. And we're having to order really large quantities. Uh, so what you can do in Latin America, which is really cool, is you can work with your manufacturer, you know, especially if they're making something that's new to them, right? Maybe like Susana said, they're a wood ma they make wood products they make tables or chairs and now you're asking them to make a chartreuse board or something like that right <laughs> you know who knows but um but so now they're they're changing up their production they're changing up their processes to work with you right but they can make that in smaller quantities to begin with and you can have your product in amazon in like two days yeah it's very quick and you can ship it super easily. You don't have to find, um, you know, some big expensive freight forwarder. You can just use DHL. <laughs> and, you know, you can ship it very, very easily. You can use ground freight. It's, you know, it's not the same. You can shorter lead times, smaller quantities. Now, that being said, if you have something where you're selling a ton, 
and you're you're selling you know it's just a really it's like your best seller and you're shipping container loads at a time you may not want to move that product first to latin america you might want to look at your whole uh repertoire of products all of your product lines and you might go okay this one i could look for a supplier of and if i could find a solid supplier you know, in smaller quantities. But if you're shipping containers, several containers a week from China of one product, you may not find a manufacturer in uh, Latin America for that immediately, because that's what I've, I've learned through working with other sellers that are really shipping container loads every week, um, that it's very difficult for some of the manufacturers they found in Latin America to produce those those kinds of quantities. But, but I think it will depend on the product because yeah. for example, I have a client, uh, she does um, clothing mm -hmm. and it was, it was super fast. I mean, she, could, she was able to source big quantities yeah. because the manufacturer it's in Peru and they've been doing this for other renamed brands in the US. Yeah, and 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 she showed them uh, her designs. Yeah, it took a little time, but they were like working together, um, mm -hmm. and she was able to like ship a like it, it was a big big quantity. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is is not that they cannot find it. Yeah, but it have to be something that we are already good at like yeah exactly because i've heard the opposite too i've heard that people have been quoted way too high of quantities from really professional manufacturers and you find the same thing in in china you know if it's a really good manufacturer that's already in major brands they're going to give you these super high minimum order quantities because they don't want to deal with small batches so like depending on the product you might find but the you might find a supplier that can that either is too much for you or too little for you or maybe you'll find one of both there's a ton of of manufacturers that are in latin america all across different countries everything that you could take advantage of so yeah. don't rule it out and the number one rule is build a relationship yeah because you never know what you can do it's the same that is the same in china even if you know, I had a client, we found a manufacturer that she just loved for her product and they were huge. I mean, we got on a video call with them and they had huge showrooms. They were doing so many different types of products. And she was like, Amy, I love them, but I, I don't know. They gave me a minimum order quantity of 10,000 units. And we got on a call. I said, don't worry about it. Let's get on a call with them. Let's introduce ourselves. Let's get to know them. Yeah. And we were able to source a small quantity from them and they were really great to work with because we took the time yes. to sit down and to build a relationship. That's totally the difference. I think that's totally, totally the difference. And, and, and mostly if you want to grow, like, like we mentioned, if we, if you want to grow your business, that's what it takes, you know, like do it yeah. probably the, the old way <laughs> or old school, uh, yeah, because it, it's about taking the time. It's about taking, caring about your product, caring about what you're doing, you know? And, but, but I mean, Latin America, it's, it's a fun place to be. Even, you know, if you can go and meet one of the manufacturers and, and try to talk to them directly. So, speaking of that, let's talk about that because I think a lot of people are nervous. They, when they think of Mexico, they think of drug cartels, they think of danger, they think of all of that, right? And they're like, we, we've heard, right? The common questions that are asked is, well, what about my goods? Are they in danger? You know, am I going to be able, is everything going to be safe there? You know, what's, what's the chances I'm going to be dealing with a, you know, a manufacturer that's involved in a cartel, you know, what? What should people be thinking about when it's, what do we say back to those safety concerns about sourcing? I don't, I mean, I never experienced that in the past with any of my clients. Uh, I don't know if that's just, you know, gossip. And I'm not saying that that doesn't exist because that exists in every country probably, you know? Yeah, true. Uh, 
But I, I don't think that's something they have to worry people about that because also let's just think it about when you go and travel, you know, if you didn't take the chance to go to a place just because what people are saying about the country and oh, and this and the, the drugs and the it's too insecure. I mean, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Just stay at your home and probably you're going to be there. And in business, I think is the same is the same way. If you it, it's we're so close, like, for example, Mexico, it's so close that in a couple of flights or I don't know, less than, I don't know, 10 hours, you can be in Mexico or less than two hours in one hour. It yeah. depends where you are, but it's so it's, it, it's, it's that, you know, it's that, cha that changes things for me. I no longer, and that's why I want to build a relationship with a supplier in Latin America. Um, you know, because multiple suppliers in Latin America, but starting with this first one, even though I'm getting some pretty high price quotes, I'm learning to, I'm not just ruling that out. I'm learning to understand the culture mm -hmm. and understand what it takes. And the great thing is I'm in San Antonio. I can be in Mexico city in two hours, you know, it, versus China. Uh, that's like several days and there's yeah. some serious quarantine. I've been during the pandemic, I've been to Mexico like four times. I love it. And there's no, you know, the hospitality there is just wonderful and the people are great and they're joyful and the food is amazing, <laughs> you know? So I, I would encourage people to not be concerned. Uh, you have to be concerned about your safety no matter where you go. Yeah, yeah. You know, true. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it serving in the military because, you know, here I was fighting to keep America free and I got stationed over in Korea and I'll never forget, you know, Korea has been at armistice for, you know, I think 50 some years now. Um, and so when I went there, my family, they started sending me like care packages, like, you know, with food and stuff like that. And they're like, be safe, you know? And um, I told them, I was like, there's a Taco Bell right here. Like there's a McDonald's. I don't, I don't need beef jerky and rations. You know, I'm, I'm okay. Like this, this place is great. The restaurants are amazing. The food is amazing. The people are cool. And I felt safer in a war-torn country, in a dark alley than I've ever felt in the U.S. <laughs> so it definitely made me think twice about like, whoa, okay, you know, it, it, until I experienced, until I went out to other countries and experienced what it was like to actually live there and be ingrained in the culture, um, everything that I had heard, everything that my family thought, you know, about that place was completely different. So yeah, yeah I agree. People should experience it and they shouldn't, um, they shouldn't rule it out. We were talking about Brazil, you know, how Brazil is, has some major electronics, you know, you can, they, they have a lot of great technology resources yeah. and stuff like that. And, you know, they're great. But when we, when the Olympics, I think it was the Olympics that were at Brazil, like four years ago or something, was it the Olympics? It no. was some major sporting event or something. Um, I don't remember what it was, but somebody was there. And, and I remember a, a few of our folks from our, um, our unit were going to visit during this time. And people were saying, oh, it's so dangerous, you know. Uh, and there was, there's a lot of pickpocketing and like small theft kind of things. But anytime you go to a major event like that, like the little yeah. thieves are going to come out. Right. So, but in general, you know, the people that went to that event came back and they were like, that was fine. You know, there was no, yeah. you know, <laughs> people weren't being murdered on the streets. It was okay. You know? So <laughs> I think it's just a, a general thing that, you know, we don't know what we don't know and we need to take the time to actually learn build relationships and give it a try, right? Yeah, in Latin America, I mean, it's, if, if people like that never been there have like all this in their heads, just go for it, go ahead and, and give it a try. And you will realize that it was just, you know, maybe one bad experience from someone here or there or whatever. I, don't, I mean, we don't know what they, what, where they were, you know? But generally, yeah. if you go to Monterrey or, or you go to certain places in the border or, I don't know, to Mexico City, also to Colombia, to Guatemala, to all these places, I, 
we welcome people from other places because we know how important it is to bring them for tourism. Now imagine if we try to keep them for tourism or, or keep coming, why we're not gonna do that the same if they're gonna help us to grow our businesses. You know, right. we're, we're gonna try to protect that. And, and so I, I will say, I will encourage everybody to, to, to explore, not, not be afraid of, oh, price or this or that, no. It's just, it's just another way to make your business grow in a certain way, or you're going to grow, or your business, or you, you're going to know more people, or you're going to be open to something different. You know, there's a lot of stuff to, to discover and to explore in, in, in a place that it's too, it is close to the U.S. Yeah. But uh, also it's, 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 I don't know. And I want to... Well. I want to put it out there to our listeners. I want to put it out there to not only think about finding manufacturers for your stuff, but think about the opportunities that you have based on the skills that you have. So you all know how to launch products online. And many people in these countries do not. Yep. And Amazon is now moving into many of these countries like Amazon just opened in Brazil. They're been open in Mexico and they're continuing to grow. There are so many manufacturers of finished goods, things that, you know, there are things that are already made that you could either potentially white label, you could list for them. There are so many opportunities to make money. Uh, you know, people are, are looking at friends that are, are um, you know, looking at Amazon Brazil, for example, and they are looking for manufacturers in the local area where they can just hook up with them, list their products to the local market because they already know what they're doing, right? So they can list those products and they can help that local market and they can make money at the same time. So really think about all of the opportunities that you have and not just even your own products, of course, you can look for alternate alternative suppliers and hopefully you can find one. And but also look at all of the other things. We're we're planning a sourcing trip to Latin America later this year. And we're thinking about starting in that white label space, right? Just discovering manufacturers in the white label space where you can discover all the different finished goods all the different things that you can already get and that you can use your skills to become an even more um, innovative and global entrepreneur. Uh, you know, your skills are valuable. And so I just wanna encourage you guys, not only to consider uh, finding manufacturers for your own products, but to look at what goods are manufactured in these other countries and use your skills to either bring those goods to the US or to people in Australia. We've got all these different marketplaces. Yeah. You know, think about global commerce and what you can do if you just dip your toe into another market. Um, yeah. So I think it's a really good opportunity and you know, it's crazy. So- You point that right, yeah. Also, yeah. also, also in, in, in the same uh, Amazon Mexico, you know, um, there is a lot of products that you could probably buy there and sell them, sell, sell the products right away in Amazon, Mexico, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, or bring it to the, bring it, bring those products to the U S or whatever. But yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. And, and I think it is like Amy said, like we don't have to keep all our eggs in the same basket. We need to find other ways and then we get creative, right? Amy, yeah. we can get, get, get uh, really creative with ideas and stuff and what we can do because when we open our minds to, to the possibilities, you know, uh, we can discover that there's more in, in Latin America, maybe for me, or, you know, it's, it, it's kind of interesting, but I will encourage everybody to just take, take the chance and, and try to uh, be, be, at least with one foot in the other side, you know what I'm saying? 
yeah. just in case, just to just to test the waters. You don't have to switch your sourcing tomorrow, but you can start like finding finding new products or new ideas or 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 working the way uh, slow pace to just change your sourcing from one uh, continent to the other. Exactly, exactly. Well, we always wrap up our our uh, sessions asking from an entrepreneur standpoint, what kinds of things are you reading or listening to that are super motivating you right now? Like, do you have certain podcasts? Do you have a book you just read that you're just like, it's amazing. It really inspired me. Is there something that you're reading or listening to right now that is really inspiring you? I read two, well, I read, I read one book like pretty much every day because I discover new things every day in that book. And it's the Napoleon Hill uh, book that is called Think and Grow Rich because it's not about making money. It's about grow rich right here, right? And as you know, Amy, I'm a life and business coach. So I, I love everything that has to be, uh, or it, it's, it's, uh, it's about the mind, you know, and, and all that. And the other one is Go Giver, that I love that book because I don't know, if you give more, you will receive more. Maybe not in the same way, but, but it's, it, it's kind of cool how things are connected in life. And when you go and you try to give to other people whatever they need, you will, you will get your needs fulfilled at some point. Got it. I love both of those books, Go Giver and Thinking Grow Rich. It's awesome. And last but not least, how can people get in contact with you to get connected um, to sourcing in Latin America? Well, I have, uh, well, my, my Instagram is at Coach Susana Vida. And then my email is info at manufacturersuppliers.com. So every, every question or whatever, you can send, uh, send an email to me to info at manufacturersuppliers.com. Got it. So info at manufacturersuppliers.com. Awesome. Yes. And then your uh, Instagram, you're on Facebook too. You're all over the place. So, <laughs> you know, I know where to find her. So, you know, you can, you can always reach out to me as well. Yeah. Also. <laughs> and, you know, we, like I said, we're, we're planning a trip out there as well. So, you know, those, those of you stay in touch, if you're wanting to just kind of get into that side of things, um, there's going to be lots of things, lots of opportunities coming in Latin America. So excited about that. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for being here, Susana. It was so great to just talk about all these things. Hopefully today, everyone feels kind of refreshed and they have a better understanding of how to get started and what to expect when they do yeah. and, um, and how to reach out to you and they get stuck. Um, and yeah, it's just been wonderful having you. So thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll see you guys next week on the seller round table. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you, Amy. Thanks for tuning in. Join us every Tuesday at 1 PM Pacific standard time for live Q and a and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, SellerSEO.com and AmazingAtHome.com.